On today's episode, we begin our build on a 318 stroker motor worthy of going into any Chrysler muscle car. And we're using parts we have lying around, as well as a couple new purchases to make this thing work and run. Part one happens now on Project Fast Fish. All right, so one of the first things that we did when we got this block is we went ahead and sent it to the machine shop. And uh, there's several reasons for that. Re reason number one, we don't have a lot of tools that this, uh, the same tools that the machine shop has. So uh, a lot of things that we couldn't get to, the machine shop was able to handle, uh, take care of it for us. All the work done on this block was handled by Rogers Automotive and Machine Shop uh, inside Lake City, Florida. Now, um, Rogers is one of those meticulous guys that you definitely want looking over your pet project uh, whenever you have uh, work that you need to get done. And let me point some things out to you that were really important uh, on this machining process. All right, the first thing that anybody's going to look at is the actual sleeves themselves. Now, there is evidence here on the sleeves that the uh, person that my dad got this block from did a little bit of ridge reaming and you can see the evidence of it right here now Roger's not a big fan of getting the ridge ream work done on there uh, in fact he'll say he has a machine that'll do it he'll have the tool but he doesn't use it at all he'll let his customers use it if they want it right uh, now what the ridge reamer does is it allows the uh, uh, piston to slide back out of the uh, engine block okay and uh, helps preserve any kind of uh, rings and such uh, so you can still see evidence of that one of the things that stands out the most is the honing itself right the uh, inside the cylinders are nice and clean and you can see evidence here where the honing was done at that recommended 27 degrees there's a machine that was in there taking care of that for it okay then on top of that the actual heads on the deck look nice and clean all right they are where the heads sit okay there's a little bit of uh water damage here from the uh, uh where the water port is or the coolant inlet but this is within acceptable limits additionally all the holes are nice and clean and where the water comes out you can see because of the hot tanking process everything is good up in there let me point a couple other things out to you looking right into here you can see that also the lifters uh, were done as well. Now, if you were being super uber nitpicky and you want to do some of your own machine shit work, what you could do is you could grind off these edges that go right here to allow a little bit better drop down from the oil. You could also do those here. All right, for our application, this application, that process wasn't needed, and I didn't ask Roger to take care of that. Uh, the deck of the motor looks very nice and smooth within tolerances, and of course, you could see the dowel pins I put in there, and this side looks just as good as the other side. Now, um, I asked them what they cover the blocks in because as you can see, there is no paint, there is no primer, it is straw or straight iron. And he says, simple WD-40. Now, looking at the front where the water pump goes, there's a couple things I want to point out. Of course, inside here, you can see that the uh, uh, cam bearings line up nice and smooth. And we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. And of course, right here, you can see that the uh, Freeze plugs were put in, okay, and then you look at the brass freeze plugs, which you use the nice brass, made in the USA, that's awesome, and uh, all the um, uh, sealant that goes around there isn't goopy, all right, so it wasn't like somebody just didn't have a care when they put it in, they were nice and detailed. Again, credit to Roger on that, all right, everything is nice and smooth up here, and you can see that same process back in the back where the um, uh, flywheel or your uh, torque plate go. All right, looking over here, again, you can see into those cylinder walls and the sleeves themselves the bottom deck of the block it looks fantastic okay uh the threads are nice and clean in there and you can kind of see that there at the camera if it'll focus in right and again that work done on the freeze plug still stands out on each and every single one of the freeze plugs including the uh, bolt here that's used for uh, draining any kind of fluids when you're wanting to drain the motor in and completely. Conveniently, there is a born on date on this motor, this block. This block, it's upside down right now, but you could see the uh, born on date was, it looks like uh, October 25th 
of 71. So that's the date that this uh, block was um, uh, created or molded or casted. And then, of course, the um, oil rings and the oil area here uh, looks nice and clean. That bolt has been removed, cleaned, etc. Now, one of, the, uh, one of the other things I want to point out to you all is if you look in here, all of those look like they've been scuffed up and or machined down or honed. And of course, they all look good. They're all lined up really well for where the main crank goes. Again, we're looking here at the uh, placement of the cam bearing, and you can see that the holes on the cam bearing uh, line up and match with the uh, uh, holes on the block to allow proper oil passage to these vital parts of that motor and this is continued out through every single cam bearing again that's rogers machine shop in lake city florida all right so we're going to set the um, one in the middle first and it's pretty easy to figure out how they go in first thing that gives it away is you have your hole for your oiling port as you can see you got your oiling port there your oiling port here on the bearing itself all right pretty easy to explain now there is also an additional notch that lines up with the notch over here so you could simply get those lined up and we're just going to do the ones here uh, going into the block itself and we're going to hold off on the ones in the top so we're just simply going to press or get these in and then we're going to remove each one at a time and then we're going to loop things up and get that crank set in place so pretty much going to work kind of sort of like this and we'll get those things closer here in just a second i'll get the nudger and uh, we'll nudge that into place You want to also keep these in order because uh, they do fall in a special order based off of the way uh, they were uh, cast and uh, ground. So you make sure that they don't, you don't lose place of where these are at. And of course, it should be numbered one, two, three, four from the back. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So you got one, two, three, four, and five. All right. And of course, uh, for me, it's easy to think that the uh, numbers all face the same direction. In this case, the numbers are all lining up to my or camera left. Now that main crank seal goes in like this right here. You can kind of see where my finger is, right? Uh, this is the main cap. Of course, as it goes in, it goes in this way, right? So you, you want to try to keep the oil in the motor itself. Thusly, you put the seal where it's the high side towards the uh, um, front side of the block. So when it sits in, it keeps that oil straight. And of course, you do the same thing back here again that high side that high ridge goes front ways to keep the oil in thus press that into place all right now we have a chance to go ahead and put our bearings inside the caps themselves and just like on the block they are um, grooved to let you know which direction they go in again you can see here i got the uh, rear uh, cap there and of course the uh, groove is right there allowing that oil to pass through here on this guy now you will get that in place in a minute but i do want you to note the other bearings right the other tops are flattened okay so these are flattened bearings other than the one on number three of course number three being right in the middle there you can see here where it is uh, grooved for oil as well so don't be surprised when you get yours and you have three flat ones without the oiling grooves inside of them perfectly normal but you want to go ahead and get those set so that we can get that placed on the block here shortly and then what we're going to do is we're going to lube up the uh, bearings set the crank and uh, make sure everything is not binding
All right, a little quick tip for you guys. I know there's already a seal back here, and of course the seal on the main uh, cap goes, has a little extra part that goes out here to help prevent leaks, but we're gonna give it a little bit of extra dot of RTV. Reason being is you don't wanna have any additional leaks here, um, and I uh, hate to be at a spot where you uh, put the engine together, and then like, you know, 300 miles or 1,000 miles later, you find yourself, you have a leak towards the back, you gotta pull everything out, and pull the main caps off, auto, yada, yada, to change those out. That's just a little bit of insurance for you. And those will spread out once we get the uh, main cap on there. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and mount the crank on there and uh, get everything torqued down, and we'll show you how to do that. All right, now that we have our caps in, it's time to go ahead and get them seated to spec. Uh, specs call for 85 foot-pounds, and we gotta do these in a specific sequence. Again, this is the heart of this motor, so you wanna make sure that you get the sequence correct. And uh, you don't wanna go all the way up to 85 foot-pounds right away. Um, in fact, you probably wanna start and probably go up to 50, 45, 50, then go to 85 and uh, there'll be a particular sequence. We'll start with uh, cap number three, and we'll do both sides of cap number three, and then we'll hit, uh, let's see here, looks like the cap um, two, and then we'll do from there to cap number four, and then the front cap one, and then the main uh, rear uh, cap. All right, with the, uh, the uh, crank in, it's time to go ahead and take care of the cam. 
Now the cam can be a little tricky to get in, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lube up every single cam bearing and make sure that cam is well lubed so as not to mar anything or scratch anything. All right, so this is a comp cam. It is one of their uh, 26H models. The uh, advertised uh, duration uh, is, uh, let's see here, the duration is 268 on the intake side and uh, 268 on the exhaust. With the 1.5 ratio on the lifters, we're looking at a total of 454 on the intake and 454 on the exhaust and of course a nice little load separation at 110. The optimum operating range for this cam is gonna be, be between 1500 and 5500 RPM, which would make it a perfect match for the intake that we have planned for this one. In fact, you guys might have seen the intake before on the other motor. All right, now that we got the cam in place, let's go ahead and get that cam locked in the place. And conveniently, we'll also install the lockdown mechanism, the splash, and of course, the fuel cam for the fuel pump that's located at the front of these engines. All right, since this motor is in this position, it's a great time to go ahead and take care of the, um, uh, well, the area where the oil filter goes. It's really simple. All I gotta do is take your gasket from your gasket kit. Again, that part number for the gasket kit is found on the description in the uh, below. And of course, you take your plate, your oil filter plate, set that there, and of course, take your um, well, socket, well, your bolt there, and get that in there and notice that how it's threaded here, right? They are threaded equally, okay? So they are equal threads on each side, so it doesn't matter how it goes in, just as long as you get it in there and get it nice and secure, because you'd hate to have a leak on your oiling system. Of course, that gasket helps prevent the oil from leaking around here, and of course, the gasket that comes on your oil filter helps the oil from being leaked out this way. All right, so get that there. Finger tight is fine for now. Take your socket and wrench, and give that thing a good squeeze and get it nice, secure, secure and snug. You don't want to over tighten it, but you want to get it in there secure without threading and stripping those threads. All right, and that should do it.